Hello and welcome Universe Mode, this is NXT. We are of course some ways away still from TakeOver. Six, five weeks, one of those two by now, I don't really know, I'm gonna go with six. Um, it's still a long way to go regardless and we still have a lot to build up to. But tonight we do begin, in a way, our building towards TakeOver because we have two things TakeOver related happening here tonight. One of them has to do with right at the start of the show and the other one has to do with right to the end and we'll talk about it right now. Here we see, to kick things off here tonight, we are going to be hearing from the commissioner, the sheriff rather should I say, sorry, of uh, NXT, Stone Cold Steve Austin. He has some news regarding NXT TakeOver that he is going to be revealing with us all here tonight to kick things off on the show, which will be pretty interesting. But our main event of the evening is the start of the best of three series to determine the number one contender to Corrin's NXT Championship at TakeOver Brooklyn. Tyler Bate and Hiroshi Tanahashi will square off one-on-one -on -one here tonight. Like I said, the first of their best of three series. They want to prove who the better man is. They want to prove who gets that chance to Corrin. There's only one way to do it, and that's to go one-on-one -on -one with each other over the next three weeks. We start things off here tonight. But we're also starting things off with the Sheriff. Stone Cold Steve Austin heading towards the ring. First time we've seen Austin since uh, TakeOver Chicago. First time he's had something to say about the whole matter. And now we wait to see what it is that Stone Cold is going to be telling us here tonight. What it is Stone Cold has in store to let us all know regarding TakeOver Brooklyn. Obviously the NXT Championship situation under lock and key already. Just waiting for that best of three series to conclude. Uh, to commence as well as conclude as well because I'm certainly hyped for those matches as well so I imagine a lot of people within NXT are but what else is it in the uh, the um, the annals maybe I don't know if that's the right word I'd probably just chuck in the word for the sake of chucking it in there but is what going through the mindset of the sheriff and the general managers they come up with a game plan for NXT TakeOver Brooklyn what is it that they want to reveal here tonight let's find out Stone Cold with microphone in hand, welcoming us all to the show as per usual. Uh, saying that TakeOver was such a wild success, he was proud of the event that was NXT TakeOver, but it's not about TakeOver that we're going to talk about here tonight. There are more pressing matters to attend to, and one of the most pressing matters, once again, is the NXT Women's Division. Stone Cold and the general manager have been working up plans for TakeOver Brooklyn in the midst of everything they've seen, and they think they've got a big plan that they want to reveal here tonight. Despite the fact that the NXT Women's Champion and Trifecta and Kairi Sane are not here tonight, Stone Cold Steve Austin is still going to deliver this jaw-dropping announcement, and that is at TakeOver Brooklyn, we will be having the first ever Women's Elimination Chamber match at TakeOver Brooklyn. Six women will be inside that chamber, and they will all get the opportunity to be the NXT Women's Champion. Oh my indeed. Stone Cold would like to reveal right now that, of course, the NXT Women's Champion Jazzy Gabbard gets in by default, as too does Kyrie Sane. However, on the way up to TakeOver, there will be four qualifying matches uh, which will uh, allow these women to become members of the matchup. It is going to be an absolutely hellacious match at TakeOver, but it is how we build there that is going to make it count. That is going to be incredible, and that is the bottom line, because Stone Cold said so. Well, I was not expecting that at all. Talk about something huge for the women's division once again. The fatal four-way matchup at TakeOver was pretty damn big. Now, the first ever women's elimination chamber is on its way. Strap yourselves in, ladies and gentlemen. That is going to be a huge, huge event. Good God. But with all the work they've done to become the champion, I wonder what is going through Trifecta's mind as a whole right now as they think about the reality of that situation. Goodness gracious, that is not something that they want to be, that they're going to be too happy about, but it's happening and they can't complain about it here tonight. Anyway, let's move on to our first contest of the evening. It is the Stone Pitbull. Tomohiro Ishii in action once again here tonight on NXT. Two weeks ago when he made his debut as Pentagon Jr. Tonight it's Titus O'Neil. And whoever it is, Ishii is fully prepared to get in the ring with them, to get down to it and to finish them off on his way towards making an immediate impact here in NXT. 
Ishii certainly had quite the reaction to his debut two weeks ago by both the people in the crowd and the uh, people watching at home as well. And now we look to see if that will continue on here tonight. I will see if uh, Ishii can continue on his uh, string of momentum as well. Let's see how this one will go against Titus O'Neil. The bell rings. We are underway. And there is not a move that uh, Titus O'Neil was probably expecting or hoping for this early on. Oh, good God, Ishii is showing no signs of remorse this early on. Take a look at the strength of the Stone Pitbull already. Triple power bombs to Titus O'Neil. <coughs> we are firmly underway in this one, and Ishii is just absolutely dominating the matchup so far. Titus O'Neil, nowhere truly to go when he makes you think, you know, as we watch Ishii in action here, how does this gearing up towards something a takeover? Certainly there was a reaction from the people at home saying they wanted something from Ishii. They wanted to see him a takeover. Well, he's certainly getting his opportunities to prove himself already, that's for certain. Oh, Titus O'Neil, though, slipping his way out of that attempted slam there by Ishii. This is an opportunity that's as big for Titus O'Neil as it is for Ishii. And O'Neil will not want to let it slip either. Titus now. Attacking the leg there of Ishii, the uh, smaller frame of Ishii. But the battering ram as well that Ishii can be. It's by taking that big boot in the face there. Ishii might, might still well be fine. As a matter of fact, yes he is. There's a knee from Ishii now and he's starting to fight back a little bit. No, he's not. Counter from Titus O'Neil. It denies that from being the case. But Ishii counters back in return as well. And here we go. Oh, good God. Ishii. Jesus Christ. Big time move there from Ishii. A dangerous move as well, no less. What else is this man going to do here? Ishii now elbows the back of the head of Titus O'Neil. Ouch. And this time he gets the slam down on O'Neil. What's he going to look for here? Into another elbow drop from Ishii, though. All in control in this matchup right now is the Stone Pitbull. The counter there, though. Back by Ishii, though O'Neill is trying to fight in this one. Oh, God, God, look at that strength there of Ishii. No wonder he's only trying when you got something like that going up against you. Ishii right now, Lariat to the back of the head. O'Neill tried to be quick and duck it, but it was to no avail, but he kicks out at two. Fair play on him for being able to kick out, nevertheless, but how much more offense can he take from the Stone Pitbull in this one? Ishii is absolutely beating him down, and now he's just going to use his raw power here just for the fun of it. Ishii... Deadlift, gut range, suplex. One more we're going to see here from Ishii now. Look at how easily. Look at that. That was something else from Ishii. And now it looks like he wants to end this one here. Another win maybe for Ishii. Could be on its way. Take a look. Look at how he holds him up there. Brain buster from Ishii. Holds him way up in the air for a good amount of time as well. And dump down. That. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that one's over. Cover from Ishii. Two. Three. Your winner. Tomohiro Ishii. Let me know when you're surprised that Ishii won this one. Another win in the bag for Ishii, though, on his way towards whatever it may be. The holds. A future for him, Tomohiro Ishii, the Stone Pitbull, without a doubt, going to be happy about that win. Another win on NXT for him and another chance to prove himself in front of the Hammerstein Ballroom crowd. That is all that matters for the Stone Pitbull. We'll see what the future holds for Ishii, but right now the present is looking damn good for him if he's putting in performances as easy as that one. Anyway, can we move on to our next contest now? The women's division was, of course, just hit with that... Uh, startling revelation of what's going to be taking place at uh, NXT TakeOver. Well, now some of these women are going to try and prove that they are deserving of a qualifier. And one of them is this woman, Tony Storm, going to go in action here tonight against Summer Rae. But Storm heads towards the ring uh, for this one. Fully amped up and ready to go. Storm feeling pretty damn good about herself. We haven't seen her in a little while. 
But, uh, you know, with everything that was going on, I think it was kind of tough for Tony Storm to fit in. What with Sane, Charlotte and Trifecta all kind of going after the same prize. It was a bit difficult for Tony Storm to get herself in the mix. But now here we go. Tony Storm ready for this one against Summer Rae here tonight. Probably not going to be a fun match for Summer Rae at all. Her one against Kyrie Sane a few weeks ago. I think it was two weeks ago maybe. Uh, wasn't fun at all either. So I doubt this one will be in the same breath. Let us see though. I mean upsets can happen on NXT. That's, that's certainly the case. But uh, I wonder how likely they are as well. And I wonder how often they can happen as well. Let's find out the answer to that one. Oh, good God. Crucifix right at the back there by Tony Storm. She is in no mood to mess around here tonight. Summer Rae hasn't even had a chance to get up to her feet right now. Tony Storm going right after her here. Double, double leg drop maybe on its way from Storm. She's running up for the other one as she gets it. Jesus. Already not looking good for Summer Rae. Drop kick in the back right now. Tony Storm, are you kidding me? Tony Storm is already looking to try and end this one. Here she goes. Storm in. Strong zero. Seriously? This soon. Tony Storm hooks the leg of Summer Rae into the cover. One, two, three. So that actually just happened. That quickly. Wow. All right. All right, Tony Storm. Gonna calm down over there. Storm with a win in the blink of an eye. Jesus. Well, I think we found someone who might be on their way towards deserving a qualifying match for uh, the uh, Women's Elimination Chamber. Jesus. That was destructive from Tony Storm. She got that one done in the blink of an eye, didn't she? I think that celebration there was almost as long. It might have been almost as long, if not longer, than the match itself. That was something else. I haven't got much to say about that one because there wasn't that much to talk about aside from that destructive victory. Let's move on again. Let's move on to a match that's hopefully longer than it takes for me to blink my eyes. Here come the New Day getting ready to make their tag team debut and this one could be very interesting. They're going to be going up against the, um, uh, the team of Ty Dillinger and EC3. I think it was last week again where the New Day made their debut. Or was it two weeks ago? Might have been two weeks ago now that I think about it. Um, where Big E went one-on-one -on -one against fucking blankety blank and uh, ended up defeating him. I genuinely can't remember who it was right now. My bad, guys. But um, nevertheless, now it's time for the... Uh, it's time for these guys to make their debut here in a tag team action against Dillinger and EC3. Two teams hungry for an opportunity. Two teams looking to truly make the most of NXT and get, the ch get a chance to shine. Of course, they've seen the success that Kofi's been having over this uh, last few uh, days, rather. I think would be the best way of saying it on Monday Night Raw. And they might be looking to replicate that themselves. Let's see if that is the case or not right now. Either way, Xavier Woods and Big E in good spirits here for this matchup. Feeling ready to go. But the question is, can they make something happen here tonight? And can they get a win for their cause here? And can they get a win to make sure that they are getting on the right track, as their theme does say? Especially when it comes to being against these two. Out first is going to be the perfect 10. High Dillinger on his way here in the Manhattan. Uh, the Manhattan Ballroom. That's not the name of it. Wow. The Hammerstein Ballroom. There we go. Pulling their tens up in the air as well with Ty Dillinger. Cheering on when he does the tens as well. Ty Dillinger certainly got the crowd on his side here as he's heading towards the ring. Dillinger and EC3 have been a have quite the cheer. Uh, have been quite a good um, been quite a good duo since they formed. I think they have they undefeated so far. There's a chance they might be. I'm not 100 percent certain on that one. I have to double check if that is the case or not. But. You know, in the wake of uh, the reform, you know, in the uh, formation of new teams here in NXT and with uh, American Alpha having just gone up to Monday Night Raw as well, there is a wide opportunity waiting to be opened for a shot at Sanity. We've seen some teams kind of coming around here trying to make a chance for themselves. Of course, we've got New Day, we have uh, Dillinger and EC3, we have El Ogulo de Lucha, and we have the team that we saw debuting last week in Itami and Kushida. That's four teams right there with maybe more on the way. Uh, all depends on how that one goes. Here comes 
1%. Comes the second uh, member of that team, the last one out in this one. EC3 heading towards the ring here. Of course, we don't know the name, if there is even a name, of the, of the uh, duo of Dillinger and EC3. We don't know if there is a name for them. Um, so, we'll see how things are going about that one. But regardless of that, they're going to be hoping for a victory here tonight, whatever the case is. EC3 always, of course, in very confident mindset, always got a bit of an ego to him. And well, to be fair, as this theme says, he believes himself to be in the top 1%, so why wouldn't he have an ego like that? Let's just see if he can back it up again in the ring as he has done on many occasions before. EC3 getting ready for this one. Looking at the Hammerstein Ballroom crowd as the New Day stand. They're probably talking through uh, tactics with one another and how they're going to win here tonight. EC3 with his own pyro as well going for him. No one else gets that one. EC3 gets that pyro though because it's the top 1% of pyro. Let's see how this one will go then. EC3 amped up. Ty Dillinger ready to go with him. Just doing some last minute pacing on the outside apparently. It's going to be Big E who will start this one off against the Perfect 10. Let's see what we're in for. I think this could be a very entertaining tag team matchup. Dillinger off the bat going after Big E there with some simple maneuvers. Snapmare and a neck crank. I wonder if the new NXT Tag Team Champions, Sanity, are watching on. You know, they won the title two weeks ago. They know they don't have to worry about Tanahashi and Bait with everything going on. So will they be keeping their eye on every tag match as it passes? Or do they just not give a, a damn? Do they not give a shit? I think it would be the very nice way of putting it when it comes to Sanity. And are they just, you know, they're just going about their own business right now? I'm going to go with the latter because it's Sanity. Nevertheless... Big E starting things off here with Dylan Joe oh, into the ring pole. That is not a ride that you want to be a part of. Certainly Big E showing some more uh, some more strength to him, I guess would be the right way of saying it. Showing a lot more um, fire within him. Uh, as opposed to what we saw from the New Day on Monday Night Raw. But Ty Dillinger fighting back as well. As much as he like, would have liked that count to go to 10. He would have lost by count out. So it's probably best that it didn't. Ty Dillinger now. Take a look at this. Double atomic drop there to Big E. The big man goes down. The counter though by Big E. Sends him into the corner. And now Big E with Dillinger face first into that turnbuckle three times over a rough landing and then a follow up with a stomp in the chest as well that is going to hurt you listen to this place Hammerstein Ballroom is certainly cheering someone on Big E making the most of it there by maintaining control right now Dillinger has struggled against Big E the powerhouse of the New Day and the man who has certainly been um, just taking control in this matchup thus far. Xavier Woods though wants some in and he is going to get in now. Tag made. Xavier Woods the legal man and take a look at that double team there. Dillinger able to turn over though and jump in and tag in EC3. Here comes the top 1%. EC3 is in now. Spear by EC3 after that drop kick and another drop kick will ground Xavier Woods. EC3 off to a Fast paced start here. Using his strength there to hit that power bomb. Nicely done indeed. EC3 is off to a damn good start here. I mean, as he would be, you know, in EC3's eyes, he's in the top 1%. Anything less than a great start is uh, poor. Crowd not too happy about him being in control, though, probably because they just want to cheer on the new day towards victory. Xavier would start to fight back a little bit here, but. EC3 just too much, you know, he's a lot going for him in many ways. He is that kind of total package-esque figure. He's got great strength, great charisma, versatile. He's got a lot going for him. And, of course, that charisma certainly leans into his ego as well. Tag made, Ty Dillinger back in this one now. Double back, body drop. And Xavier Woods hits into the mat there. And Xavier Woods will also make the tag into Big E as well. Not what I think Ty Dillinger had in mind as he gets flattened there with that shoulder charge. Big E flattening him down now. The big man back in a great counter by Dillinger though with that there's press. 
crowd trying to will New Day back into it again. Those New Day Rocks chants back on here. Ty Dillon just stuffing that one though with a uh, Russian leg sweep and a splash. People now uh, up in the upper row slapping the, uh, well, the foundations essentially, the stands of the Hammerstein Ballroom trying to cheer on New Day. Nice move there by, Big, by uh, Ty Dillinger now just wrenching on Big E, wrenching away at the, the muscles of Big E, trying to wear him out here, but Big E hanging in there right now. He has been great in this matchup so far, i got to say. Hard elbow to the leg, though, by Dillinger, who has been... You know, Big E's been doing great, but Dillinger has certainly been struggling as well. Uh-oh. Oh, he stomped him down. Oh, Dillinger's in trouble. The perfect hands on his way for a unicorn stampede. Tag's going to be made in and out here by the New Day. Xavier Woods got his stomps in. Now Big E will get his stomps in. This is not somewhere you want to be, whoever you are. And the final one incoming. Drop kick by Woods. And could that end it here? Cover. Big E couldn't stop EC3 in time. And now it's all starting to break down in this ring. All four men in the ring all starting to fight with one another right now. Big E and Xavier Woods just going after one another with whatever they have here. Close line. EC3 trying to help out his tag team partner there, but was unable to. On the second rope now as Xavier Woods continues. Can things turn around for Dillinger and EC3? Yes, they can. He swats away the neck breaker attempt there. Dillinger looks like he's going to have to make the tag into EC3 here, and he gets it. What are they looking for? Oh! Did you hear the impact of that double super kick? Wow. EC3 has been an absolute machine while he's been in the ring. Got to say that as well. Competitive tag match this has been though, no doubt about it. Kicking the leg there by Woods, smart idea, has him up on his shoulder here. Counter there by uh, EC3, and EC3 has him now, one percenter! Drilled Xavier Woods in the mat, cover made by EC3, and it gets the three count. It is victory for EC3 and Ty Dillinger. It was a tough match. New Day put in a strong show in this, specifically Big E as well. I gotta say, a great stuff from Big E. But it is EC3 and Dillinger who are victorious here tonight. But there's gonna be no celebrating just yet. EC3 with a microphone in hand after the match and is having a conversation. And is talking about something. Yeah, he's uh, he's what he's happy to reveal that the team finally has a team name. From now on, they will be known as Perfect. Because you cannot spell perfect without E-C-3. Man, that's some lovely ego he's got going for him there. E-C-3 and Ty Dillinger, though, now known as perfect. If that's the slogan they're going for for the team, though, it sticks. I've got to say, it's good. But there you have it. A team name has been revealed. Perfect is the name of the duo. EC3 and Ty Dillinger are ready to keep on going. And a, and a team name now just shows that their bond as a team has got even stronger as well. Pretty good. We'll see where that leads in the next few weeks. Shame for New Day though, especially for Big E. He's doing great in that matchup. Anyway, let's move on to our next contest here tonight. Coming up to the ring is Big Cast. For this one, he's going to be going one on one against the Velveteen Dream. But Cash here tonight does not care about Velveteen Dream, he just cares about getting a win for himself here. Cass has kind of been. There you go. Cass kind of been going downhill since the loss back at. Um, uh, let me find the word for it. Back at TakeOver Orlando to No Way Jose in that one. And he's not really been able to recover ever since then so it hasn't exactly gone well for Big Cass in that regard and I don't honestly like no offense to Big Cass you know he's big um but I don't see him excuse you but I don't see him um getting one over on the Velveteen Dream I don't see him getting one over on Dream Dream is still undefeated at the end of the day so 
If he thinks he's going to be able to pull one over on the Velveteen Dream, he's going to have to think through a few other things. And Velveteen Dream, of course, already has a target on the back of his head, if you saw last week's NXT. Following Dean Ambrose's victory over Pentagon Jr., um, out came uh, an outburst, almost, from Dean Ambrose, saying he's been here on NXT and he's seen one person he doesn't like, one person who's full of himself, and that is the Velveteen Dream. To which, after thinking about it for a week, uh, no shit. Velveteen Dream is full of himself, Dean Ambrose. Have you seen the Velveteen Dream? No offense, mate, but I'm just saying. Nevertheless, the Dream heads towards the ring here tonight for this one. Ready to compete against Big Cass and keep this undefeated streak going. I wonder what Velveteen Dream does think about that outburst from uh, Dean Ambrose. It was only a few weeks ago that he put things away with um, No Way... Uh, not No Way Jose, sorry. But with... Um, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Kushida, there we go. And now, with little time to recover, he's already got another target on his back. Velveteen Dream, though, ready to uh, compete here tonight, regardless of that. Just looking to get another win under his belt. It's great to see, though. In a way, the Dream is undefeated, and it was great to see a few weeks ago the Dream was a man of his word and was able to beat Kushida again and get things done. So, can he do it again here tonight, I wonder? I think he will, but, um, you know, we'll have to see if that is definitively the case or not. Dream and Cass ready to start things off here. Cass, of course, the larger of the two and the stronger of the two, but Velveteen Dream able to, um, work things around a little bit more. Velveteen Dream certainly able to almost dictate the pace of the match. He's got, he's got those kind of mind games to him, does Dream, and he's very flamboyant in them as well. Big Cass. Oh, cheap shot there by Big Cass. After backing him into the turnbuckle. Trying to demonstrate his strength there, and that didn't sit well with Dream. Take a look at that now from Dream. Kicks there to the ribs and throws Big Cass over a little bit as well. I do wonder as Velveteen Dream, you know, I said it, I'll say it again, I wonder if Dream is thinking in this matchup, you know, ah, oh, this could be Dean Ambrose one day. This could be um, Ambrose who I'm going to have to focus on. Or is that running through the Dream's mind at all? Dream's uh, slipping outside of the ring there, and Big Cass having to exert some energy to get back in the ring. To get out of the ring, sorry. And Dream is going to send him up the ramp a little bit. Not too sure how wise of a decision that is for the Velveteen Dream, but um, that has most certainly happened. Anyway, we're back in the ring now with these two men. Uh-oh. Backbreaker there by Big Cass. And take a look at that again. Dream is kind of trying to play some mind games. Big Cass again going outside of the ring here as Dream rolls out of the ring. Cass this time rushing back in the ring. And look at it. It allows Dream to take uh, the advantage there. Nice. I like that. Dream in control here now, though, and I wonder how this one's going to turn out for him. Dig oh, digging the knee in the face there of... Uh, in the back of the head, sorry, of uh, Big Cass. Let's see what happens right now. Famous, sir? Yes. Happy days right now for uh, the Velveteen Dream. He is leading the way in this one so far but Big Cass able to bring out a, bit, a little bit of a reversal there so much so far so good for both sides however neither has been able to truly take charge of this matchup Big Cass though letting his anger get the best of him now maybe his frustrations as of you know his uh, failings in NXT there's no real word for it um, and now he's looking to try and just bounce back there but no way uh, uh, I don't know why I brought up no way Jose there but uh, Velveteen Dream with a counter in. He's going up high as Dream think a purple Rainmaker right about now. No, he's not. He splashes down, though, on, uh, on Big Cass. Goes into the cover, and Cass able to kick out at one there. Had enough room to do so. Big legs were able to kick out as well. Dream now going in for a submission here. Take a look at this camel clutch applied. But Big Cass is going to get his way out of it. Taking his time. But yes, he does. Here's that straight punch again. Sending 
the Velveteen Dream down. Cass certainly not caring about Dream's looks, about how Dream will look tomorrow. He cares about how Big Cass can get a win today. And Cass right now. With the Empire Elbow. Will that put away Velveteen Dream? Is this going to be Dream's first ever loss? It will not. Cass does not seem too happy about that one either. Hope that it would be victor a victory for him here. Oh, but Dream is certainly fighting back. Nice counter there by the Dream. And take a look at this now. Velveteen Dream has him up here. Dream going to go for it. Death Valley driver from the Dream. And that will put him in perfect position for this. Dream up on the top rope. Look at how high he got. Purple Rainmaker. One, two, three. Velveteen Dream is your winner again. Dream over for Big Cass. Another win in the pocket for the Dream. Dean Ambrose, you think this man is talks too much? I might be inclined to disagree with you. That's not because I'm a fan of the Velveteen Dream. That's because his, his actions within this ring speak for himself. Has he been pinned? Nope. That's all I'm saying. But Dean Ambrose thinks he can do it, so I wonder if that'll be the case or not. Either way, Velveteen Dream celebrates another win here tonight on NXT for him. Maybe we'll see something happen between those two down the line, but time will only tell. One thing's for certain, though, in tonight's main event, we are going to be seeing something happen right here, right now. It is the first match of the best of three series between these two athletes. Both, of course, want that shot of Corrin. Only one of them's going to get it, but which one will it be? Will it be the ace Hiroshi Tanahashi, who is desperate for one more chance at Corrin? Or will it be Tyler Bate, who believes that Tanahashi is desperate for this, but believes there is no doubt in his mind he has earned the shot over Tanahashi and over anyone else? We will find out right about now. It is the first of potentially three matches on its way between these two. And out first comes the ace of the universe, Hiroshi Tanahashi. Tanahashi, of course, was tag team champions with Bate, but only for a few days uh, before Sanity won them back. And it was Tyler Bate in that match who realized that Tanahashi wanted that gold because he thought it would subside the gold that Corrin holds, the gold that Tanahashi is desperate for. And he asked... Uh, Tanahashi last week to come out to the ring and talk to him face to face, man to man. And Tanahashi said that he doesn't know where Bate came up with that idea, but it is correct. Tanahashi is desperate. He cannot get it out of his mind. He cannot get Corrin or that NXT championship out of his mind. And in Tanahashi's mind, furthermore, he believes there is nothing, nothing that can stop him from having that title. He needs that title. And he needs that shot. Tyler Bate disagreed. He said that he thinks he's deserved that shot more than Tanahashi. He has fought. He's had his matches to prove himself. Now it's his chance to make things happen. These two men disagreed with each other. And they said if they've got a fight to become the number one contender, they're going to make it happen on a big stage. They're going to make it happen in a big fashion. And that was where the two out of three falls, sorry, the uh, best of three was concluded. And now it happens. It starts here tonight on NXT. These next might only be this week and the next. Someone could clean sweep. But if it's not, three weeks, including this one, are going to have three incredible matches on their way. Tyler Bate heads towards the ring here for this one against Hiroshi Tanahashi. You see there the mustache mountain shirt. He has been training with a close friend, an old close friend of... Uh, Trent Seven for this one. Been trying to gear himself up to go up against a guy like Hiroshi Tanahashi. Of course, the ace has been in matches like this uh, more than once. He's been in dire situations way more than once. Tanahashi has just been thinking what has got into this fabled land before and what will get him beyond that fabled land again. Tyler Bate though ready for this one. Tanahashi is as well. The Hammerstein Ballroom is. Everyone watching at home is and I am. Who will take the 1-0 lead here tonight? Let us find out. No surprise there, though. A shake of the hand by both men. They may well be wanting the same prize, but they have respect for each other regardless. And here we go now between these two. 
Let's see how they will size up in this one. Let's see how well they know each other. A little bit of a back and forth there at the start, but now it is into the corner level tie-up and business has begun in this one. Hammerlock applied here by Tyler Bate right now. Hiroshi Tanahashi, though, able to slip out. Lock in one of his own. Tyler Bate slips out as well. As the arm of Hiroshi Tanahashi again here. Can Tanahashi slip his way out? He cannot. Pretty interesting there. Now the corner elbow tie-up applied here. Tanahashi now goes behind on Tyler Bate. The youngster able to slip his way out. It's amazing to think there's about 20 years, I think, between these two guys. Bate's about 21, and I think Tanahashi is about 41. Stalemate there between the two. Tanahashi almost twice the age of Bate. But Bate ain't going to let that huge experience factor that Tanahashi has weigh him down at all. Let's see how this one will go in the, in the goings of this one. Let's see how well these two men can adapt. I think first fall, probably going to go better for Tanahashi. This is, you know, they're not able to learn how one another operates. They're not able to learn what makes the other one better than the other. They've just got to go with their strengths and weaknesses and expose them all right now. And if there's anyone who could pick up on strengths and weaknesses better than anyone else and fully capitalize on them and win, it's Tanahashi. And that is where I think Tanahashi will have the advantage in this first matchup here tonight. And Tanahashi is willing to risk it all right away. Oh my God. DDT on the apron from Tanahashi. Jesus Christ. That is what the NXT Championship means to him. That handshake beforehand is now almost a thing of the past for Tanahashi. It is business. And nothing but business. Jesus Christ, that was rough. But Bate is still choosing the fight on here regardless of it. Tanahashi snapped. German suplex on the outside as well. Oh. Oh, look at that though. Bate ducks under and delivers one of his own. Incredible there from Tanahashi, from, uh, from Bate to be able to fight back there and return the favor to Tanahashi. Back in the ring we go now with these two men. Tyler Bate seems to be content with going after the arm of Tanahashi right about now. Let's see how that goes for him as the uh, match picks up here. Certainly has picked up with that DDT on the outside. Swat, uh, swats away the arm there. Tanahashi now up on... Tanahashi going to go for the Styles Clash there. They said, you know, about Tanahashi being able to read anyone's game easily. And that is exactly what he's doing here. And that is why he has the advantage right now. What a clothesline from Bate, though. The passion that this young kid represents is just incredible. Absolutely outstanding to witness. It is mesmerizing in some ways as well to see it. He will never quit and never give in. We saw it at TakeOver and we saw it last two, uh, two weeks ago on NXT as well. He just cannot allow himself to give up. Maybe that's something that Tanahashi sees as a strength and a weakness. His refusal to give in will give him a, a means to try and keep on going in this one. Another snap German suplex though delivered by Tyler Bate here. Oh, did you hear that? Do you hear that noise from that running in Zaguri in the corner? Incredible. And Bate now. Here we go. Tyler Bate has him. Kicks him in the gut. Bate going to look for the first fall. Tyler Driver. Has Tyler Bate got the first fall on Tanahashi? He covers the man. One. Two. Oh, that was so close. That was so close to three. I bet Tanahashi must be feeling awfully lucky about that right now. But I bet Bate must be in a sense of disbelief in some ways that he did not finish the job. Tanahashi now calling towards the crowd. The ace feeling a little bit of confidence within him. But it's not enough to just be confident. Tanahashi's got to do his very best to win here. Good counter from Bate there. Not too sure what Tanahashi was looking for, but he got stuffed off the ropes now. Beautiful slam. And 
Tyler Bate now trying to win via submission over Tanahashi. That would be a feat if ever I've saw one to watch Tanahashi give in. And he's not going to either. Tanahashi will keep on fighting here. And oh, there's the dragon screw. There is the lethal dragon screw of Tanahashi. Feels like your leg is going to pop out of socket every time he connects with it. Only a one count, though, it gets him. Tanahashi going up to the second rope now. Is he thinking something big? Without a doubt. This could be big from Tanahashi. Crossbar. Jesus Christ. What is he made of? Tyler Bate plucking Tanahashi out of thin air. Call him with ease. And now Bate up on the top rope. What is Bate going to look for here? Double foot stop from Tyler Bate. Runs into the cover. Will it be enough for that number for the first fall here in the best of three? It will not. Oh, missed that attempted neck crank though. Tanahashi going to be glad about that one. Drop kick in the back of Tyler Bates head as well. Tanahashi rolling himself up and there it is. Sling blade from Tanahashi. Will it be enough for the first fall in this one? Covers Bait and Bait kicks out at two. Oh, Tanahashi thought he had him there. And Tanahashi may very well have him right now. He's going up high and you know what he's going for. High fly flow from Tanahashi. One, two. Tyler Bate kicks out at two. And there it is from Bate. That never say die attitude. That refusal to give in. Tyler Bate cannot, will not, and shall not quit in this one. Tanahashi knows though he's got to think of something. He's got to think up something to try and put away bait because no lie It's pretty simple the longer this match goes as resilient as Tanahashi is the more a match like this can favor youth and bait is very youthful Look at bait striking back there on Tanahashi. What has he got in mind now for the ace? Going for a strike there Tanahashi able to counter Tanahashi cross body variation of the high fly flow a little bit late going into the cover, but Tanahashi hopes it's enough. And Bait tells him to, to just shove it up his ass, kicking out at one. This is that hunger and drive from Bait in its fullest form. He cannot quit. He refuses to. Look at him trying to fight back. Counter there, though. Tanahashi with a forearm, but he falls. But Bait can't capitalize. He's too exhausted to keep fighting. Incredible sling blade from Tanahashi as well. Just what that little moment there. Tanahashi swung everything into that forearm. He fell to one knee, but Bait couldn't keep fighting. Was that the moment where Bait surpassed himself? Was that the forearm where Bait, for all that he tries to hang on, he just can't any longer? Tanahashi now has him. And he's going to look for another Styles Clash. And he'll drill Tyler Bate face first into the mat. You can see the pace of this match almost slowing down in many regards. They are exhausted. They've already thrown so much at each other. And they've still got such a long way to go. But Tanahashi, Texas clover hold on Bate. Bait has refused to give in before. Will he give in? He's crawling to the ropes. He's crawling to try and make it. But Tyler Bait couldn't. Bait taps out. And Tanahashi takes the early lead. 1-0 Tanahashi in the best of three series. I said, when it just comes to straight wrestling, when the strengths and the weaknesses haven't been worked out, it's Tanahashi who will win. And he did but neither man refused to give in there. Neither man could quit. That was incredible. Bait was forced to submit. Bait might have been thinking about living to fight another week in this thing, living to fight another day. Well, now that next day is next week here in NXT when it is make or break for Bait. He either evens the scoring or he goes out. And Tanahashi is off to Brooklyn. It is that close for Bait now.
Tanahashi might sacrifice next week for a third fall. We'll see how things will go when next week shows up. What a night NXT has been here, though. Women's Elimination Chamber match on its way. And this first of... Uh, uh, hey, if, if these matches are like this, I hope three matches between Tanahashi and Bate. That will end this episode of Universe Mode, though. Thank you guys for watching. Take care, guys. And ta -ra.